Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Brie, if you are new here, and in today's video, I'm going to be doing a full face using only BDS safe makeup products. BDS is the Boycotts, Divestments, and Sanction movement. It is a Palestinian-led movement for the freedom, justice, and equality of the Palestinian people. The BDS movement was inspired by the South African anti-apartheid movement, and its intention is to put pressure on Israel to comply with international law. The official Act Now campaign is split into four parts with focuses on big brands to pressure them. It's a lot easier to target specific companies and specific brands than it is to try to weed out everything that is involved with Israel. I will put the BDS official Act Now campaign up on the screen for you guys to see. There's actually only one beauty brand on there. It's Ahava. Um, they are sold at Ulta. That is a hard, do not purchase from them, do not support them. But when it comes to the beauty industry, there are select companies that are the main targets. And then there's also individualized boycotts. And I'll kind of get into that as I'm doing my makeup and, and talking a little bit more about the products and the brands and who should be supported during this time. So with that being said, if you guys would like to see me do a full face of makeup using only BDS safe products, then just keep on watching. So when I was researching for this video, I chose to break down my safe products into three different categories. I have my products that have absolutely no known ties to Israel whatsoever. I also have a section of brands that have not spoken out in support of Israel. They do not, like they, they have not donated money to Israel. However, their products are sold in Israel. And I'll get into that a little bit in just, just a minute. And then my final category are also brands that have not spoken out in favor of Israel. They don't donate money to Israel. However, they do have investors that are tied back to Israel. The reason why I chose to include those two categories is kind of almost a little bit similar to the argument around um, cruelty-free makeup for me personally. And this is, everyone is going to have their own opinion on this and everyone is going to make their own decisions on what they are and they are not comfortable using. When it comes to brands that still sell in Israel, or they have investors that are tied in Israel, but they themselves have not been supportive or donated money towards Israel, I give a little bit more leeway. I kind of tying it back to, like I said, the, the cruelty-free makeup. For example, the argument always used to be was NYX truly cruelty-free if they were owned by L'Oreal and L'Oreal sold makeup in China where they were required to test makeup? In my personal opinion, NYX has always been cruelty-free. I believed that if the brand themselves did not test on animals, then they were a safe, cruelty-free brand. With that being said, a lot of times, brands don't get a say in who their investors are. You, brands, brands, companies don't get a say in who buys their stock, unfortunately, as it is. I don't, and feel free to educate me in the comments. Feel free to correct me if I'm wrong on any of this. I would love to be corrected. As far as I am aware, and I'm, I'm not like a financial investor, I, I'm not literate in the subject or anything like that. Like, as far as I'm aware, companies like e.l.f., do not get a say that BlackRock purchased stocks in their company. BlackRock doesn't have any say in how ELF is ran. BlackRock just bought stocks because ELF was very successful, so BlackRock saw dollar signs. That's how that is to me. I understand the argument where buying makeup from this company is therefore in turn putting more money into BlackRock's pockets 
and is therefore in turn sending money to Israel. Hence, again, why I said every individual person is going to have their own decisions to make when it comes to this. I kind of view it as a tier. I am always going to seek out these brands that have no known ties, no investors, they don't sell in Israel at all. If I can't find what I'm looking for, what I need in a product or something like that, then I will more than likely go to the next step, which is a brand that doesn't have investors in Israel, but they may sell in Israel. And then after that, I'm likely going to go into brands that may have investors in Israel. The biggest thing is that this is always going to change. <laughs> like there are going to be companies that are going to get investors purchasing in them. There's going to be companies that are going to change their stance. Like there, there's going to be companies that are going to change one way or the other, unfortunately. And this is going to be an ever changing list. The other biggest thing that I want to say just right out the gate before I start talking about products is I still own makeup that is not BDS safe. I unfortunately was not incredibly familiar with the struggles and the plight and the, the catastrophe that was happening in Palestine prior to October. And I know that that's the case for many, many, many people in the world. What matters now is that people are educating themselves. Apparently it's a fucking catwalk behind me. I am still going to use the makeup that I own that is not BDS safe. All this means is that I will not be purchasing from these brands in the future. It could be my absolute favorite foundation and I will not purchase it again. As long as these brands continue to support Israel, I will not be purchasing from them. Don't be wasteful. Don't throw away makeup just because a brand is doing unethical things. If you've already given them your money, then you've already given them your money, unfortunately. Just use what you have. Don't waste product. Don't, don't contribute to the other global issues that we have in, regarding climate control and climate, the climate crisis and everything like that. But okay, I'm gonna go put on some eye primer. I'm gonna be so for real. I thought that I had one on lock and I thought that I had another one on lock. And as I was researching, I didn't. I did not have anything prepared for this portion. And eye primer is like very individualized. I did not want to just like go out and purchase an eye primer and wing it when I started this video. So I'm going to go put on some eye primer and then we will jump right into it. So this is obviously not going to be an entirely inclusive list. I, there are a lot of brands that are BDS safe. Actually, there are a lot of brands that are kind of blurred lines, but there are a lot of brands that are BDS safe. Um, I will have listed and linked down below a Google Doc that a wonderful creator made that breaks down everything. There is also the No Thanks app. It's available on both Android and Apple. And it is a wonderful, wonderful service to be able to scan products, search brands, and they give resources and proof for their claims of being not BDS safe. So that will, you know, all be listed and linked down below, but I'm going to start out with my eyeshadow and we're going to start out really strong with the very pro-Palestinian queen Huda Beauty. So I have the empowered palette here today. Her entire brand is obviously <laughs> BDS safe, but I'm going to use the empowered palette today. While I'm doing my eyeshadow, I want to talk about the main beauty brands that are the big main main target for boycott. The first one is the Estee Lauder company. Ronald Lauder is a staunch Zionist. He has funded Netanyahu's political career. He he has been very pro-Israel in the past six, seven months. 
and he is also the current president of the Jewish National Fund, which is a quasi-governmental agency whose main function is to legitimize the Israeli occupation on Palestinian land. And Estee Lauder is the kind of company that owns several subsidiaries beneath it with brands such as Bobbi Brown, Clinique, MAC, Avita, Estee Lauder obviously, La Mer, Origins, Tom Ford, Killian, Joe Malone, Le Labo, Michael Kors, Glam Glow, Too Faced, Smashbox, like so basically every brand that is a subsidiary of Estee Lauder is a main focus for boycotts. And this is what I mean when I say that specifically like the official BDS movement targets specific brands because it makes more of an impact than targeting everything. And for the BDS, the official BDS list, that does change every once in a while. They'll, they'll target a brand and then after enough pressure has been placed on that brand and the brand actually complies and listens and, and understands, then it gets updated and a new brand gets put into its place. It's a lot easier to focus your energy on smaller sections than hitting everything. You're more likely to be successful that way. Another major brand that is a target of boycotts is L'Oreal. So L'Oreal has given a lot of money to the Israeli occupation. They also currently have a factory on an illegal settlement in the West Bank. And they also manufacture a line of products using Dead Sea Minerals under the name Natural Sea Beauty. And those minerals come from the occupied West Bank. And L'Oreal's reach is pretty massive in the beauty community. Um, obviously L'Oreal, the brands. There's also Garnier, Lancome, Maybelline, NYX, Giorgio Armani, It Cosmetics, Mugla, Mugler, Prada, Ralph Lauren, Valentino, Yves Saint Laurent. I'm skipping over some as well. Like L'Oreal has a massive hand in the beauty community. I mean, L'Oreal and Maybelline are pretty much like the staples of the drugstore. Unilever is another brand that unequivocally supports Israel, so they are also on the boycott list. They, listen, Unilever owns like everything. So I'm not gonna read this entire list. I'm first of all, just going to focus in on the beauty and even then I'm gonna skip quite a bit of the beauty. There is a lot of brands though that Unilever owns. So on that list would be Dove, Axe, Caress, Dermalogica, K18, Kate Somerville, Living Proof, Love, Beauty and Planet, um, Noxema, Pons, Q-Tips, St. Ives, Swan, uh, Suave, Tatcha is a big one, TIGI or TG, Tresemme, Vaseline. And while I'm sure that I am missing a ton, the last major brand to boycott would be Cody. And Cody is owned by the Raymond family, Ryman family, and they are staunch Zionists as well. And Cody owns Calvin Klein, Kylie Cosmetics, Marc Jacobs, Gucci, Sally Hansen, Burberry, Chloe, Cody, obviously, CoverGirl, Rimmel, Adidas, interesting. Again, I'm skipping over a ton, but like CoverGirl being a big one there. And while I'm not using any of their products today, I did just want to point out because I keep seeing Revlon on the boycott lists because up until last year, um, they were owned and led by a staunch Zionist, Ronald Perelman. However, when Revlon filed for bankruptcy, 
he lost all of his holdings in the company and he is no longer involved in the company. So Revlon is, I think, trying to like make a comeback and they would be a safe drugstore option as they're, as far as I can tell on a quick Google search, I haven't looked into the new CEO too much, but it seems as though they may be safe. Another BDS safe product, they were originally owned by, uh, I wanna say Estee Lauder, however, they have since been sold and they are no longer owned by Estee Lauder, Stila. So I'm gonna use the Stila Glisten and Glow in the shade Stream for my lids. Okay, I am gonna do my wings and base off of camera, but I do wanna show you all of the products that I'm gonna be using because they are all BDS safe. For my wings, I'm gonna use the Physicians Formula Eye Booster Waterproof Liner. They have absolutely no known ties to Israel. And then for my base, I'm gonna use the Milani Supercharged Dewy Primer as my primer. They do sell in Israel, however, they have not been pro-Israel. They have not made any statements pro-Israel. They do not donate money to Israel, but they do sell in Israel. I'm also going to use the Makeup Revolution Bright Light 4-in-1 Face Glow and the Makeup Revolution Eye Bright Corrector. Makeup Revolution d does have an investor that does, I, I don't know, I didn't look too much into the investor, but they, they do have an investor that was specifically kind of called out a little bit. They do sell in, I think they sell in Israel. However, it does appear as though their brand is sold in Israel. It is really hard to say with some of these brands that are sold in Israel if Israeli beauty suppliers are just buying wholesale and then selling it. it, it it's, it's hard to say. And then for my foundation, I'm actually gonna mix together two. I'm gonna use the NARS Light Reflecting Foundation and this NARS is owned by Shiseido, which is a BDS safe company. However, NARS does sell in Israel. And I'm also going to be using the very pro-Palestinian Halsey's brand About Face and the Performer Foundation. I'm gonna mix these two together. And for concealer, this is probably my most controversial brand. A lot of people do not wanna support them. They're kind of my like last ditch effort. The e.l.f hydrating camo concealer. I'm going to use this today as my concealer. I, again, I, I, brands don't get a say in who buys their stocks, which is why I'm not willing to completely cut off a brand. If they haven't made any pro-Israeli statements and they haven't actually donated money to Israel, I'm a little bit more willing to buy some products from them. Again, that's my own personal take correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm going to go do all of that off camera and I will be right back. Okay, next up I'm going to do my cream products and for bronzer I'm going to use the ColourPop Bronzer Stick. ColourPop is a brand that has no known ties to Israel, but they do have products sold in Israel. And for my cream blush, I'm going to use the LYS Higher Standard Satin Matte Cream Blush in the shade Kindness and they have absolutely no known ties to Israel. So you may be watching this video and wondering why I haven't really said any numbers, you know, in regards to the atrocities in Gaza, the genocide in Gaza. And honestly, the biggest reason for that is because of the fact that I do pre-film. Um, I am filming this about a month before you guys are gonna see it. So I don't wanna give in inaccurate numbers. I mean, that's it's as simple as that. It's over 30,000 women and children and innocent civilians that have been murdered. Over 200 aid workers have been murdered. Millions displaced. Millions starved. Millions, you know, permanently disabled by bombing. And if you are a regular watcher of mine, you may be wondering why this video kind of almost seems like it's coming out of nowhere. I honestly wish that I would have done this video significantly earlier on. Um, I just, I don't know, it never really crossed my mind as like a video idea and then 
in the same breath, I am kind of glad that I waited because it's given more opportunity to exclude brands, honestly, because it is such an ever-changing list. But with that being said, um, I, you know, don't take my silence on YouTube as complacency. I don't have a very massive reach on YouTube whatsoever. I have a much bigger reach on TikTok and even then it's not really that big of a reach on TikTok. But as I said earlier, I unfortunately, I was unaware. I was completely unaware of what was going on in Palestine until October 7th. And I have spent every single day since October 7th educating myself consuming content, reading information, like listening to scholars like Norm Finkelstein. Like I, I have been spending every single day since then educating myself and doing my best to make informed decisions and doing, you know, what I can as a, an American citizen to support the Palestinian people but I don't want to sit here and pretend like I'm a wealth of knowledge on the topic or you know anything like that I, I, I know quite a bit now it's been six months for me but I'm not like out there you know debating people on the topic but yeah I, I have spent every day trying to make the most informed decisions about my purchasing and how I'm consuming products. I do my best. I'm not perfect. I unfortunately am never going to be perfect. I have ceased all purchasing from the, the big brands like I have spoken about, but even last night when I was just, you know, kind of going over my list again and just making sure everything was good to go, like I had brands that I had to take off the list because they were fine when I planned out this content weeks ago. And now I'm finding out new information because things keep coming out. I am, however, somebody who prefers to make these decisions with sources and a lot of times I will see, you know, Twitter threads or TikToks or things like that where people will be like, oh yeah, like this brand's not safe, you know, they can, they, they can go fuck themselves, but they won't give any more information as to why or anything like that and that doesn't usually sit right with me. So. I spent a lot of time researching this and doing my best. Like I said, I'm not perfect. And again, if at any point you have information about a brand that I've spoken about in this video, please correct me in the comments. But I am doing the best that I can with what I have available to me. So for powder blush, I'm using the LA Girl Just Blushing Blush. LA Girl has absolutely no known ties to Israel. And for powder bronzer, I'm gonna use the Juvia's Place Bronzed Duo, another brand that has absolutely no known ties to Israel. My biggest thing when it comes to boycotts is, first of all, knowing that a lot of these brands, such as like Unilever, for example, Unilever owns like everything, is while I'm trying to make the most conscious decisions possible, sometimes things are gonna slip through the cracks, unfortunately. And in some situations, we end up unknowingly supporting non-BDS safe companies for whatever reason, whether that be, you know, we tried to buy you know, store brands come to find out they're made by one of the main brands and it's just like a offshoot or whatever, but like, or just you didn't know. Sometimes you just don't know. Another point to be made is in regards to food in particular and some people having dietary restrictions, some people having children with dietary restrictions and dietary preferences. I'm very sympathetic, I'm very sympathetic to that as somebody with ARFID, Avoidant Restrictive Food intake, intake Disorder, sometimes I don't get a say in whether or not my, my safe food is BDS safe. 
and I can't continue to fight for the Palestinian people if I'm not eating food. So, and like I would never tell someone with like an autistic child who has like severe food aversions, like you can't eat this food because it's not BDS safe. That's why I really, really, really try to focus in on main brands like L'Oreal, Estee Lauder, Unilever, and then like the main BDS movement list. All right, I'm gonna go set down the rest of my face off of camera. For my under eyes, I'm gonna use the Essence 16 hour cover and last. They have absolutely no known ties to Israel. And for the rest of my face, I am gonna use the e.l.f. Camo Powder Foundation. Like I said earlier when I talked about the concealer, they do have investors, but they don't really get to decide who their investors are. And I, again, I'm not like financially literate in that way, but I also don't know that a brand can just decide that someone doesn't hold their stocks anymore. I don't know that they can just buy them back from them. I don't know. I don't know how all that works, but they're not owned by one of the big, big groups. And that's what is the most important to me. I went ahead and just smoked a little bit of eyeshadow underneath my lash line as well. I realized I was so busy talking about what I was talking about that I didn't actually tell you guys what I used on my lids. So back into the Empowered palette, I used Best Self as kind of just like my all over color. And then I deepened it up with a little bit of Legacy and a little bit of Confident. And I just used Best Self on my lower lash line, honestly. Okay, for my blush topper, I'm gonna use the Essence Pure Nude Baked Blush in Pretty Peach. They have no ties to Israel. Essence um, does have products sold in Israel. However, they have not like shown support for Israel. Really quick, I'm gonna go in with the Physicians Formula Butter Glow Powder just to add a little bit of glow to my skin. Again, Physicians Formula has no known ties to Israel. And then for highlight, I'm gonna use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Nicole Glow Kit. This is super not around anymore, but the brand does still make highlights and they have absolutely no known ties to Israel. Basically, I just wanted to try to pick brands that are still extremely accessible. Obviously, you're likely going to be safer with indie brands. Now, that's not a guarantee because indie brands can be a lot better at hiding stuff because they're not as popular and they are run by less people. So it's also entirely possible that people are just going to not say online how they're spending their money or who they support in an effort to not lose business. So it's never a guarantee, it's, unfortunately. That's just the world we live in. But you know, in a lot of cases you are going to be safer with indie brands than you would be with a major brand. However, with that being said, indie brands are not always the most accessible. They can be expensive, they can be hard to get a, like, get a hold of. It, they're only sold online, so if you're picking like complexion products and they're not the right shade, you could just be out the money that you spent on it. There's a lot of accessibility issues when it comes to indie brands, so I wanted to try to go with brands that are still a lot easier to get your hands on. Okay, so I am gonna go finish up the rest of my makeup off camera. Really quick, I'll show you guys a lot of what I use. I'll talk about my lips when I get back because I haven't quite decided on color yet. For my like pencil liner, I'm gonna use the About Face Line Artist Liner. Again, staunchly pro-Palestine. For my mascara, I'm gonna use the Essence Lash Princess. We've already talked about Essence. For my brows, I am going to actually try this for the first time because my brow gel is not safe, but I'm gonna use the e.l.f. Wow Brow and the Milani Brow Pens. And then for my lashes, I tried to research the hell out of this. I'm pretty sure we're good to go. I'm gonna use the AOA Lash, AOA Studio Lashes, Shop Miss A. Pretty sure they're safe. I'm pretty sure. I, tr I tried really hard to research that. I couldn't find anything. So I'm gonna go do all of that off of camera. 
like I said, I'll show you guys the lip products that I use when I get back, but I will be right back. Okay, so for my lips, I, I'm even going to show you my lip liners because I'm going to talk about a brand that I haven't talked about yet. The Wet n Wild Gel Lip Liner in Bear to Comment. Wet n Wild has no known ties to Israel. They are BDS safe. I also use the ColourPop Lippy Pencil to kind of contour my lips just a little bit. And then for the rest of my lips, I used the Lawless Forget the Filler Plumping Lip Gloss. They also have no known ties to Israel. I just want to reiterate again, like I'm not perfect. I do not expect anyone to be perfect. Um, this is going to be a learning experience for everyone involved. I would never shame someone for using products or consuming food or doing whatever that they already have. Um, I also would never pressure people to participate in boycotts, but I'm never going to like, you know, publicly scold someone for <laughs> not participating in some portion of a boycott or whatever, or, you know, shame people for using e.l.f. or something like that. I, I, again, my main focus is the big major brands, the Estee Lauder, the L'Oreal, Unilever, so on and so forth, Cody, so on and so forth. And then of course the actual official BDS movement boycott list. So with that being said, I would love to open up a conversation down below about your favorite BDS safe makeup brands, your favorite BDS safe products, everything like that. I will of course not tolerate any pro-Israeli bullshit in the comments, nor will I on the other hand uh, tolerate any sort of anti-Semitism in the comments down below. Being Jewish does not equate being a Zionist. The two can coexist, but there is also a ton of Christian Zionists, there's atheist Zionists, there's liberal Zionists. I am anti-Zionist. That's what I am. Uh, that does not make me anti-Semitic for the people who seem to think that. But regardless, I don't care about their opinions. With that being said, please be nice to each other in the comments. This is always a very hot button topic. Um, and I do see a lot of like infighting regarding brands and boycotts and stuff like that and like we're all just doing our best and that is the best that we can do that's that but definitely sound off your opinions down below please subscribe if you have not already it would mean the world to me like this video ring the bell do all the things free palestine from the river to the sea bye <laughs>